Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, General, I really appreciate not only your testimony, which lays out the significant challenges uh, that we have that your uh, combatant command faces, but also um, how forthright you've been, not only in testimony, but also in public statements. I think you've been a real leader for our country in terms of telling it like it is in terms of what, what the challenges are and what we can do. Um, I want to dive deeper into uh, what the, the chairman mentioned at the outset of his remarks. One of the aspects of Russia, Russia's activities is the uh, militarization of the Arctic. And um, I have a map here. I'm going to pass it out to my colleagues. But it's a, it's a pretty informative map of, of how the Russians are militarizing the Arctic. Um, that's new, a new Arctic command, as you know, four new Arctic brigades, 11 new airfields, a huge icebreaker fleet, uh, land claims that they're making now in the Arctic, increased long-range air patrols. And, General, you and I have talked about their recent Arctic exercise, which I think caught a, a number of people by surprise. 38,000 troops, uh, close to 3,400 military vehicles, 41 ships, 15 submarines, 110 aircraft, lasted five days and included long-range destruction of simulated enemy land and naval units as the mission. Um, you talk about the COCOM seams in your testimony, and the Arctic, in my view, is a classic place for the COCOM seams, the UCOM, PACOM, NORTHCOM. What do you think the Russians are up to, and do we need an Arctic O plan that can help us coordinate efforts between the different seams that we have in our COCOMs. Senator, thank you for the opportunity to comment on an important issue, and, and I share many of the concerns, all of the concerns that you identified. Um, one would hope that we could see what is happening in the high north as an opportunity. Economically, that shorter route, even if it's only for several months a year, saves lots of money and would make for a great uh, uh, push to all of our economies. And it's so going to be an important route, and there's a lot of resources there. Is that what you think the Russians are doing? What are they doing? So, Senator, I think they are, in uh, to your concern, making sure that they have the military infrastructure to be able to influence uh, the high north. Um, uh, of course, their uh, words are that this is all in a peaceful manner. Um, and again, as pretty big as, military exercise to be in a peaceful manner. Yes, sir. We have to watch their actions and see if we can derive their intents from those. But to the seams, Senator, there, um, the good news here is that we recognize those seams. Uh, Admiral, as I call him, Shortney Gortney, <laughs> and I are, have been friends for many years, and we have met recently on this very issue. And we have an initiative called the Russia Strategic Initiative, where all of the COCOMs who touch Russia have come together, and UCOM will lead an effort that we make sure we don't have any seams in the way. Do you think we need an Arctic O plan, though, to help uh, address that and, and know what the requirements are in the Arctic and other places? Sir, if you would allow, that's more of a policy uh, way ahead. In I your think, personal opinion, do you believe that we— I think it's important that I am aligned well with the other COCOMs and how we would address the North. Let me ask another uh, more specific question. You know, the Army is contemplating removing not one but two BCTs from Alaska. If you look at the map there, um, you show it, it, it certainly shows how important that strategic location is. Many uh, military officials have testified in front of this committee that they think that would— be a bad strategy in terms of the signal it would send, our readiness. In light of your testimony that Putin responds to strengths and weaknesses, um, and that a critical element of our strategy, strategy is a persistent forward present, presence, and that your PACOM counterpart is uh, focused on a, quote, rebalancing of forces to the Pacific, in your personal opinion, given all of these items, do you think it makes sense to reduce one Army soldier in Alaska, let alone one or two entire BCTs, particularly our only airborne BCT in the entire Pacific and the Arctic. Um, and what do you think Mr. Putin would think about us removing one or two BCTs from the Arctic at this time when he's certainly trying to muscle his way into there? Senator, the, the 
Alaska and the forces in Alaska are critical to our approach to Russia. You rightly recognize that this is a strategic area and an, an important area, and, and Putin will be watching. I don't mean to be flip, but it's an important area for General Breedlove because his young daughter and, and serves in this service as well and will soon land in Alaska to serve for the next three years. Oh, we'll be glad to host her. Um, so, Senator, this is important, and uh, the signature that we have there to be able to respond is important. I know that the Army is facing some physics problems as it relates to funding, and, and I'm not tracking their thought process there, but I do believe it is important that we keep the right capability Abilities to address aggression in the north. Should we remove one single soldier from Alaska right now? Sir, I, I, uh, I would ask maybe that the Pacific commander would be better positioned to answer that. I would not recommend reducing our, our capabilities in the north. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.